Be right back. Exciting, interesting, gory, well made. These are words that I would all that I would describe this movie. But I would also use words like nonsensical and what the hell is going on. We are talking about the film Dead Night. This one is directed by uh, Brad Barra and stars Barbara Crampton uh, and Brie Grant, along with obviously a, a bunch of other people. And um, I would say this film has a definite comparison to the Evil Dead remake. So if you, not so much the original, but if you've seen the Evil Dead remake, I was so reminded of that film. Now, um, this film is kind of hard to talk about because it so doesn't make any sense uh, to try and boil the plot down to a very kind of a basic synopsis is actually kind of hard. But essentially it focuses on this family of four, mother, daughter, father, son, and the kind of the daughter's uh, female friends of five of them. And they're going to this kind of like cabin in the woods, our like Evil Dead, uh, to basically spend some time there. And apparently the, the, this kind of ca cabin is built on this um, iron ore deposit, which has kind of got holistic properties and may not be like a kind of like, you know, healing vibes and all that sort of thing. And it's kind of obviously in a kind of a colder environment or that time of year, it's snowy and everything. And while they're there, they encounter this unconscious woman in the snow, played by Barbara Crampton. And she's actually a, some type of senator. And then they take her back to the cabin, and then the strange things that start to happen there is a paranormal presence uh, within the woods that kind of has eyes on this kind of family for nefarious means. Now, that kind of all sounds kind of uh, um, pretty standard, as you'd probably, you know, think, that's oh, not too weird with that one. But then let me add a couple of more things into this. So you kind of have a concurrent storyline as well. So we have two versions of the events. And I would say, before we kind of get into that, one of my pet peeves of movies is where we have like a scene at the beginning that shows you like uh, the end of the movie. And then you kind of like, the, the movie kind of almost is plays in sort of flashback 48 hours earlier or something like that. And then it, it, you know, it shows you who lives, who dies, that sort of thing. And I, and, I, and I just don't understand why films do that because it, I think it sucks out all the dramatic tension because you know who's going to live and you're just waiting for it to happen. And this movie sort of does that. So he basically has uh, scenes that happen quite early on where it's actually showing you like one of these kind of like true crime shows that actually shows you like an alternate event that kind of um, that basically happens in this kind of like this uh, quite violent. Uh, trip shall we say um, but, but because of that you kind of ultimately it tells you who lives and who dies so it kind of like I said it sucks up those dramatic tens and I, and I just wish films wouldn't do it this is slightly different because it's not all at the beginning it kind of peppers it throughout but you kind of you get the idea about who's going who's to live and who doesn't who doesn't so you're just kind of waiting for certain characters to meet their end uh, but that, that whole concept is just is integrated into the film with kind of uh, weird future predictions, people, characters who sort of turn up out of nowhere that seem to be in two places at once, uh, just bizarre supernatural elements that are just not really explained uh, and you don't really know why things are happening. This film is um, both fantastic and frustrating. Let's go with the good stuff first of all. This movie is particularly well shot. The cinematography here is absolutely stunning. Beautiful, like these kind of woodlands are, are both beautiful but absolutely terrifying at the same time. So they've captured this, this great kind of like these shots where we see these kind of like these trees and they look dark and menacing but also very kind of like, like I say, very beautiful. The snow coming down and everything like that. They look, the cinematography, the lighting, it all looks great. And when we kind of see our characters outside and they're kind of the cold breath they're all kind of nice and well lit and the camera work is great and the kind of the production value here seems very good although the acting was was all quite good 
I do have a little asterisk of that because I don't think there's a, a, a thing, something I have a problem with, but I think it's the writing rather than the acting, but I'll put a pin in that for now. But the actual acting for the character into play I thought was, was quite fun. Um, the, there are some very gory scenes in this movie, so if you're a fan of gore, if you're a fan of kind of creature effects and monsters, there are some fantastic uh, kind of like kind of creature effects. And this movie is very well paced, it really kind of doesn't kind of like hang around, you won't get bored. <clears throat> Even the kind of the prologue at the beginning of the movie, it's straight in there. There's no like fanning around, this, you know, it's straight in there where there's some, some violence and some, uh, some gruesome deaths and some particularly kind of scary imagery. And when we see kind of images of our antagonists, some of the antagonists, I've got to say, they do look genuinely terrifying. As we go through the movie and, we, and, and more things are revealed, I feel it kind of, uh, it kind of loses a little bit of that. Because it kind of shows you things that are happening, but it doesn't put a lot of context in it. And this is where we're going to transition into our, our negative side of things. I don't like the idea of this kind of, like these two concurrent storylines. I appreciate that the filmmakers here are trying to have um, almost a kind of a non-linear timeline, but I don't think it really works. Now, I was reading before I did this review that apparently the uh, before this movie was released, they actually heavily re-edited it, uh, so I can only wonder what happened before, but this, this to me, this version doesn't make a lot of sense, because events happen here that just don't really make sense. You don't get why people are in certain places, you don't understand what's happening in regards to the supernatural element and what's actually going on and what it is. The most frustrating thing with me, and this is kind of hard to take because it's going it's to involve a spoiler, but I'll do my best without giving away anything, is the character of the, the mother, played by it's Brie Grant. So she, um, <clears throat> her, or two things really, her reactions to what happens to her family and then what she does is just ridiculous because there's just like, there's no way a, a mother would react the way that she does in this film with seeing what's happened to her family. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, and that's very poorly, and this is what I mean, it's very poorly written. I don't think necessarily the acting is the fault, maybe partly, but that's, I mean, that is just ridiculous, I thought. And also, um, same kind of thing, same kind of scene, really, but she's ultimately tasked to do something. And I, and I just, I wonder why she just kind of like bought into what was said to her by someone that she has no reason to trust. It just didn't make sense to me. But this whole movie doesn't make sense. What you're seeing on screen looks great, but doesn't really make any sense. Uh, it's well made, it's a well made mess. It's a well made, entertaining mess with, you know, we've got Barbara Crampton who looks fantastic. I've got to say, I have a big crush on Barbara Crampton. <clears throat> But the characters are kind of played well, kind of like their, I, like, I like their interactions together, it looks great. But some of the story elements here are poor. And I think the editing is, is obviously to blame here as well. So it's, it's a hot mess. It's an interesting movie, and I feel if you're a horror fan, there's a lot to like here. Because it does, what it does well, it, you know, it, it really does great. I mean, the practical effects, the makeup, the gore. There's a lot of gore here, and it all looks really, really good. But the story is just all over the place, and, and I think they try to try to be too clever. They think they're being clever with this kind of this concurrent, this this this, this true crime uh, documentary thing, you know, with kind of interviews and recreations and all of that. That needed to go, and it needed to be t it needed to be told in a more uh, traditional style with better um, better kind of like descriptions about what's actually going on and kind of stuff like that because what we do have unfortunately is a little unsatisfying uh, so it is a hot mess I enjoyed it but it's it's kind of I wish it was I wish it was better ultimately but it's definitely worth a watch if you are a horror fan if you like practical effects if you like the kind of just like a well-made film in regards to camera work and acting and lighting and that then check it out. 6 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.